Poesy Speaks by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Poesy Speaks A body of beauty is mine. O poet, moulder of me, Withhold not the breath divine, The soul of truth that makes free. Fair form and repose for a day, The body of beauty of me, with the pulse beats of life all away, is well for beauty in thee. Yet give to me life all aglow, not a demon of darkness to blight, but a love-lit soul pure as snow, beckon me an angel of light. O body of beauty is mine, O poet, moulder of me, in breathe with breathings divine, or body alone let it be. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Minnis Basin by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Tim Mead in Colorado Springs, Colorado. About the buried feet of Blumadun red-breasted sphinx with crown of gray and green the tides of minas swirl their veiled queen fleet oared from far by galleys of the sun the tidal breeze blows its divinest gale the blue air winks with life like beaded wine storied of glooskap of evangeline each to the setting sun this sea did sail opulent day has poured its living gold till all the west is belt with crimson bars now darkness lights its silver moon and stars the festal beauty of the rural new old Facing the dawn, in vigil that ne'er sleeps, The Sphinx, the secret of the basin, keeps. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rain Cloud by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Rain Cloud Swift changed to storm tones is the golden air, And shut the heavens with a descending veil of cloud, Here warm and brown, there cold and pale, White veined with sudden fire and red with glare, Now falls the twisted rain, like unbound hair, Dusking the wooded hills and mountain trail. Now, marshaled by the trumpets of the gale, Sweeps wide with level lances to their blare. O rain cloud, minister of cooling dew, To waiting harvests sheathed in mystery, Bearer of blessed balms for fevered ills. Thy rending veil breaks on the holiest blue, All quick and palpitant as angels see. God's smile falls upon the breathing hills. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rose by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Rose. Five petaled splendor set in hillside place parent of queenly sisterhood that stir to every garden wind and swift confer a tar to pour from out each precious vase symbol of secrecy to latin race virtue and blood to york and lancaster thy tint de pompadour sweet arts transfer to sevra and erst rose noble bore thy grace to me thou art the glow of secret heat that burneth at the heart of day and night 
an odorous flush of beauty without blame love's oriole where through my eyes discreet may look far and beyond the outward sight and unconsumed see his fiery flame end a poem this recording is in the public domain a willow at grand prey by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce Gachuk. the fitful rustle of thy sea-green leaves tells of the homeward tide and free-blown air upturns thy gleaming leafage like a share a silvery foam thy bosom as it heaves o peasant tree the regal bay doth bear its throbbing breast to ebbs and floods and grieves o slender fronds pale as a moonbeam weaves joy woke your strain that trembles to despair willow of normandy say do the birds of motherland plain in thy sea chant low or voice of those who brought thee in the ships to tidal vales of acadie vain words grief unassuaged makes moan that gasparo bore on its flood the fleet with iron lips end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Bowing Dyke by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk Sea widowed lands more fair than Tantram are Winter's green providence in July's sun The clattering steel till all was over and done Flashed on thy breast from dawn to evening star soon herds of sweet-breathed kine of sere canard whose eager hoofs the hasting morn outrun sea of lush clover aftermath has won and golden girdled bees anear and far lo as the harvest moon comes up the sky her shield of argent mellow to the rim the phantom of the buried tide doth flow and without noise of wave or sea-bird's cry fills all thy ancient channels to the brim thy levels of a thousand years ago end of poem this recording is in the public domain Love's Imminence by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk I watch the clouds soft poised in upper air And feel a presence bodied in its folds The wind in dark and shine A voice I holds The noontide forest listens to my prayer the trampling seas with rumbling chariots bear significant behests in heats and colds urim fire throbs intense on barren wolds the crystal globe of dewdrops love declare the silence of the wheeling heavens by night by day is but the pealing anthem sweet beyond the pitch of my dull ears to hear while veiling shadows are the excess of light that marks the goings of his power so near and hides love's regal presence on his seat end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mystery by Theodore Harding Rand 
Read for LibriVox.org by Tim Mead in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Oh, veiled enchantress of my days and nights, that in sweet wonder's realm of witchery to fairer visions ever beckons me. Thou'st left the valleys for the rugged heights, a gladsome youth, the hill of thy delights, winged my lithe spirit to speed after thee, but now come down, close veiled mystery. The garish sun but withers and affrights. I feel thy charm, shy and elusive one, as in the gleaming springtide of my life, whose zest was all thy unattained pursuit. Still flit before me till the race is run, and when with doubt the common day is rife, thy wonder wand set thick with flower and fruit. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night Fisher by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Night Fisher Gray liegeman of sundown and dawn Who chides with a lone song the ocean murmuring trees I haste with thee at dusk to stalk the seas Where feed the finny flocks of shepherding tides O oh, wild the pulses beat As round us glides the tidal spirit like a midnight breeze, burdened with moan of life and death decrees, the deep night's tideline pacing with our strides. More weird than winkings of the ruddy Mars, these flitting gleams and breaths of hell and heaven, searching the shadowy folds twixt peace and dread. Nor dreamed I such solemnities did leaven life's daily meal and league its dole of bread with unseen forces vaster than the stars. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Deep Sea Shell by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Deep Sea Shell George V. Dearborn Arrived from out abysmal deeps of brine, A regal splendor glows within thy whorl, Like pomp of rosy morn and shimmering pearl. Surely the hand that made thee is divine. Ah, why so richly dight for beauty shrine? No eye can feast on walls of gemmed burl, Far down the overwhelming rush and swirl Of awful waste, scarce plumbed of fathom line fit for the palace of high seneschal inlaid with colors which the tyrian king vain sought to rival on his royal scroll and echoing yet the ocean's trembling string methinks the master wrought this ivory hall to please the love of beauty in his soul and a poem this recording is in the public domain. A Red Sunrise by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Red Sunrise The naked bay, its silver notes is telling Sweeter than flute or harp or singing bird Beatings of rosy rhythm in winsome word of lilting song are softly shoreward welling a near and far the ruddy water swelling in laughter peals around the fair earth heard thrill swift the home-bound keels so long unstirred the kiss of day the weary wings compelling beware the elfin bugle sounding clear as glows morn's pallid ash to crimson flame and makes a bloody dazzle of the waves ere burn the embers in the west all blear 
the deep shall thunder its awful chant of fame or noble hearts gone down to wandering graves end of poem this recording is in the public domain the opal fires are gone by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo the opal fires are gone the opal fires are gone and but a stain of day yet lingers as a sudden night with swift cloud blots the crouching hills from sight and the far sea moans deep in ominous pain ah me it is a swart winged hurricane the furious tide in elemental fight is lashing fierce and horror with giant might the bleeding shores the tale shall tell the main brave sailor reeling in thy storm-drunk bark blinded by sheeted rain blown tempests wild and vexed with roaring darkness round about the heaven-sent vision fair of wife and child calm seated at love's hearth with face a hark makes thee divine amid the awful rout end a poem this recording is in the public domain the cumulus cloud by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by nemo the cumulus cloud mountains of heaven in stainless white ye shine islanded in calm of pearl and sapphire blue the pillared heights are lifted into view in spectral power reposeful as divine a timeless peace abides in every line soft moulded from the quarries of the dew yet fateful fire the inmost heart throbs through and thunder slumbers in the brows benign paling before the massive whiteness there the faltering moon comes up the waiting night the faithful stars like folded lilies sleep till love's wide wonder of the lulled air melts with its rose-tipped crest in azure deep and sets the skyey plains abloom with light end a poem this recording is in the public domain Sea Fog by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Sea Fog Here danced an hour ago a sapphire sea. Now, airy nothingness, wan spaces vast, Pale draperies of the formless fog o'ercast, And wreathed waters gray with mystery. The ship glides like a phantom silently, as screams the white-winged gull before the mast weird elemental shapes go flitting past which loom as giant ghost above the quay the vapour lifts again the sea gleams bright the heavens have hid within their chambers far cloud stuff of gossamer from which are spun tomorrow's skyey palms and wove with light the belted splendours for the rising sun and rosy curtains for the evening star end a poem this recording is in the public domain partridge island by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce Gachuk. the title deeds of these rich shores are thine by age thine too by succor and defence ere they were kissed by winds or waves beat thence thy breast of beauty broke the beating brine all hail fair isle first born thy jewelled shrine is worn by pilgrim feet thy fir groves dense peopled with hamadryads cheat the sense with frolic fays and all the rosy nine 
these younglings gilbert's cliff and sharp and split bold silver crag the islands five and two and broad browed blomadon the basin's ben when comes the witchery of fog wreathed view each robed in richest hues with curtsies fit sails in and out the circle of thy ken end of poem this recording is in the public domain tennyson rock by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. majestic awesome and inspiring mock sculptured by frost and sun and bitter brine has nature's sympathy with men divine to carve remembrance in colossal rock circled by voices of the sea god's flock deep calm is his aloofness of the pine as when he waited his great pilot's sign ere he embarked from out earth's sheltered lock o seer and englishman our answering hearts leapt at thy words of empire sure tis meet in that true north thy form should front the sea where howe macdonald topper played their parts at statecraft gathering at old england's feet our pleiad state one flag one destiny end of poem this recording is in the public domain of beauty by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Of Beauty The convoluted wave, God's first seashell, Upgathers now the deep's great harmonies, From the far blue an alp-like cloud doth well, Barring its azured peaks to the heavenlies. My spirit's outward bound hath liberty, Earnest, as rising flame its young love burns to catch the awesome gladness flowing free o'er earth and sky as beauty's face upturns o oh, naught is great without thy effluence in curving billows culminating sweep in mountain heights the strength of grace is seen essence divine of godlike competence reposeful in the heart of things is sleep robed in the purple sceptred throned a queen and a poem this recording is in the public domain the undertow by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo the undertow bbd o'er all the shining levels of the beach the tide outpours its hissing foaming brine while with the primal surge the winds combine to press the eager waves to utmost reach see yon brave billow rising from the pleach of seething waters with a might divine its sinews wrought in beauty's flowing line leap forward now to make the age sought breach lo as the cresting plume is seen aloft the footing of its strength on sudden slips and all is whelmed in thunderous recoils ah tragedy of lusty life how oft some high emprise of soul divinely grips but as it crests fate's undertow despoils end a poem this recording is in the public domain Glooscap by Theodore Harding Rand 
Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Dim name, yet grand, that ever winks serene in the red faggot's light, and like a ghost hovers above these raucous tides, this coast wreathing weird webs of arrowy salts and keen under the black blue night's unrolled screen the loon is calling to the fiery host and yet no answer comes to keep thy boast far years their mellow thunders roll between divinest of the red man's race and name fullness of hiawatha's dawning day giver of laws priest prophet all confessed thou'lt come again appeased thy wrath and shame thy speed in all thy limbs up yonder bay in white canoe from out the naked west end of poem this recording is in the public domain Silas Tertius Rand by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Oft did thy spell enthrall me, spite the cost. Thou brought'st a charmed and fadeless holiday, Stories and songs and Indian epic lay, Whene'er thy eager step the threshold crossed imagination all its plumes uptossed to follow where thy spirit led the way the sense that thou sawst god when thou didst pray i never through the dimming years have lost fair minus shores thy step did gladden too thou charmst great glooscap from the unlettered past and toldst his story to the listener nist i lover of song of learned lore and vast thou lovedst the indian with a love so true in his sweet tongue thou gavest him the christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Tireless Sea by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Tireless Sea Age after age the tireless sea doth fling Its serried waves against this frowning rock Whose base is known a thousand years of shock And shouts its purpose to its floor to bring High up in landward now the raven's wing on trees sure rooted inland nests the hawk instinct of doom for here swift ships shall dock and give of east and west in commerce sing warriors of truth unwearied host of god who like the deep march to the signs of heaven thus saith the lord your cry count not the years gray superstition's crumbling front shall nod beneath the iteration of your stephen and god's sweet love flood all the place of tears and a poem this recording is in the public domain the veiled presence by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by nemo the Veiled Presence An ashen gray touch faint my night-dark room. I flung my window wide to the whispering lawn. Great God, I saw thy mighty globe from gloom Roll with its sleeping millions to the dawn. No tremor spoke its motion swift and vast. In hush it swept the awful curve adown. The shadow that its rushing speed did cast Concealed the father's hand, the kingly crown. 
Into the deeps an age has passed since then, yet evermore for me, more humble grown, the vision of his awesome presence veiled, burns in the flying spheres, still all unknown, in nature's mist-emanled seas unsailed, and in the deeper, shadowed hearts of men. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Resistless Fate by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Resistless Fate Resistless Fate and Iron Destiny Are writ upon the tide, its branded mark. It comes and goes heedless of wind or bark, Nature's untamed and tameless energy. So rolls the cycle of eternity days months and years faint shadows on the arc within our human ken rush from the dark and speed return as god's own mystery i on this tide beat shore and clutching time marvel of what account my selfhood's will against timeless might time's impotence is laid and through my inmost soul as at the prime a voice from out the awesome vast doth thrill o man thou art in god's own image made and a poem this recording is in the public domain the sea undine by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk exquisite thing soft cradled by the tide sprung not from lathe or wheel or human wit wonder of worlds which touch the infinite shallop that waits a brave undine's white bride within the smooth and sheeny walls are dyed with the pure pink of autumn dawns alit without with stories of the deep or writ how fairy slight the thunderous seas to ride the massy tides gride over reef and ledge and sudden waves from fell eurocladon dash to swift death the sailor in the bay but this all lipped with pearl and on the edge of doom the fingers of a babe might slay sleeps in the stressful surge at blomadon end of poem this recording is in the public domain to emmeline by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by nemo to Emmeline. In white spruce bower, without look on the sea, king cups and daisies dancing down the slope, and broad winged ships, world messengers of hope, furling their plumes or lifting them all free to catch the skyey airs. Here, tis that we oft watch the fringes of the tide, where ope the swinging doors through which all blindfold grope the muffled waves of shoreless mystery the touch of two vast worlds is on us now our spirits hear the ebb and flow unseen of swift commingling tides afar and near the low sweet murmur of the early vow commerce of life's strange sea on wing between and folding plumes arrived the heavenly pier and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Cirrus Cloud by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Cirrus Cloud. Thou hast the secret of the fiery dew, variety and number infinite 
are vestured in thy wavy flakes of white of distance and of space thou hast the clue aloof from vapory clouds that fume and spew lifting thyself victorious in fight into the far repose of zoned light thou strivest to attain nirvana blue mottled or plumed or ribbed or ripple barred encamped upon the unfenced fields of space unsullied are thy tents cool washed in air and when morn's bugle blows or skies new starred thy cohorts wait days coming parting face like flocks of rosy angels drifting there and a poem this recording is in the public domain day and night by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by nemo day and night and so the strife goes on from age to age in ceaseless round of victory and defeat young day comes forth sun-clad with shining feet in beauteous pomp and throws his battle gauge grim ancient night distraught and blind with rage twanging her dreadful bow flies in retreat wrapped round with raven darkness as a sheet till from the east she may the duel wage so night pursuing wounded day takes breath to find his blood-stained mantle in the west and dusk get o'er with plumed shafts of death secure beneath the horizon's verge and wrath he wings a parthian arrow back his path and dies with crimson ethiop's jewelled vest and a poem this recording is in the public domain under the beeches by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk the sibyl's speech breaks from these leafen lips moved by soft airs from shadowy spaces blown we rear these giant bowls amid eclipse we work men die the work abides alone the day has met the night beneath the sky and the hot earth put off its robe of flame sweet peace and rest come with the night bird's cry sweet rest and peace the herald stars proclaim tis very heaven to taste the wells of sleep the founts of supersensuous repose the sibyl's rune still murmurs on the breeze the purple night falls thick about the trees and blessed stars like lilies white and rose burst into bloom on heaven's far azure deep end of poem this recording is in the public domain the nightingale by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by bruce kachuk o seraph bird who on god's altar stairs dost ring in showers of silver peals thy bells of song that ceaseless flows like dropping wells and sprinkles all the dusk with holy prayers o welkin glad shot through and through with song as upward springs the spirit tipped with flame tis not to itis dead nor dian's shame these joy pangs with their hint of tears belong the life which pulses in the bursting year a thousand choirs him on the sunlit globe but lest the living flame to ashes turn thou 
in the voiceless night o priestly seer interpreter of nature takest thy robe and fillst with vocal fire the sacred urn end of poem this recording is in the public domain the loon by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Loon Neath northern skies thou hits thy punctual nest By crystal waters in their lonely play, Meeting the challenge with which instant day And night thy chariness and courage test. Half bird, half spirit, O elusive quest, That thinks thy dappled mould but common clay, Thou wakest with demon laughter, ha ha bay, art soul of solitariness unblessed. Flash of pure wildness on dust saginay, awareness of wild nature's subtle breast, freight in a thrill with wordsome life yet gay, thou cleaves the deluge dense, a winged jest, that rallying mock and jeers an impish mark, the echo of thy flout of Noah's Ark. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hepaticas by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk A shining troop of cherubs Just a lit from the low-bending skies child faces sweet upturned and open to our human greet fresh from the gladsome fount of life emit heralds of spring forewinging as ye flit the garland seasons with their sheaves of wheat and to all listening ears christ's words repeat man shall not live by bread alone tis writ evangelists fair of the new-made year this news from god forgot blow everywhere and fill the hollow sky the haunting air till from his loving mouth as sphere to sphere man knows the beautiful the good the true divinest manna dipped in heavenly dew end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the mayflower copse by theodore harding rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. With gladsome note, the robin debonair heralds bright May. Pale sky and earth stained snow warm at the touch of south winds as they blow their wafts of life through winter's lingering air. Hid like some laughing child shy mayflower fair beneath the leafy shield with face aglow thy pearly self the coy springs first tableau come to the day and yield thy fragrance rare ah me while thrushes pipe and plumy winds fan northward all their balmy fervors sweet and groves are misty with the reddening bud a gentle spirit from the past unbinds the peace of lethe and with quickening beat stirs to divine unrest my fevered blood end of poem this recording is in the public domain June 
by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Now weave the winds to music of June's lyre, their bowers of cloud whence odorous blooms are flung far down the dells and cedarn vales among sea lowly plains sky touched to heaven aspire now flash the golden robin's plumes with fire the bobolink is bubbling o'er with song and leafy trees aeolian harps new strung murmur far notes blown from some starry choir my heart thrills like the wilding sap to flowers and leaps as a swollen brook in summer rain past meadows green to the great sea untold o month divine all fresh with falling showers waft waft from open heaven thy balm for pain life and sweet earth are young god grows not old end of poem this recording is in the public domain an inland spruce by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. An Inland Spruce Peasant of northern forest, humble tree, Curdled and frocked in all year homespun green, And lacking not among thy kind the mean Of such as bear the white sails gallantly. Magician thou, thy full breath symphony Of spacious dream dissolves the walls between, me now in nature's organ voiced queen the multitudinous ongoing sea the sheeny garb from thy tall shoulders hung making thy spiry form like base antique for resinous balms of frankincense and myrrh and round the bearded skirts the drowsy purr of life in murmurings of thy sea harp strung touch thee to kinship fine with celt and greek and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ghost Flower by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Ghost Flower. Like Israel's seer, I come from out the earth, confronting with the question air and sky why dost thou bring me up white ghost am i of that which was god's beauty at its birth in eld the sun kissed me to ruby red i held my chalice up to heaven's full view the wistful stars dropped down their golden dew and skyey balms exhaled about my bed alas i love the darkness not the light the deadly shadows not the bending blue spoke to my trancid heart made false seem true and drowned my spirit in the deeps of night o painter of the flowers o god most sweet dost say my spirit for the light is meet and a poem this recording is in the public domain Annapolis Basin by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk The full-fed crystal streams from east and west and south Thy rich-wrought cup filled to the brim Till where the northern star soft gilds the rim Thy waters called or broke at love's behest oh to have seen thy cataract's white breast rifted with ruth through the lone centuries dim for toiling fundies wooing tide 
for him to blend thy sylvan calm with world unrest far floods thy bridal brought fair lake brave sea and late the winged ships champlain de mont with poutrincourt and sequent games of war thy marge now crowned with peaceful husbandry and set with england's rose where bloomed fleur d'or still croons all day love's wedded title song end of poem this recording is in the public domain in autumn's dreamy ear by theodore harding rand read for librivox.org by bruce Kachuk. in autumn's dreamy ear as suns go by whose yellow beams are dulled with languorous motes the deep vibrations of the cosmic notes are as the voice of those that prophesy her spirit kindles and her filmy eye in haste the fluttering robe whose glory floats in pictured folds her eager soul devotes lo she with her winged harper sweeps the sky splendors of blossomed time like poppies red distill dull slumbers o'er the engaged soul and thrall with sensuous pomp its azure dower till roused by vibrant touch from the unseen power the spirit keen freed from the painted dead on wings mounts up to reach its living goal end of poem this recording is in the public domain Victor is he by Theodore Harding Rand read for librivox.org by Bruce Kachuk Victor is he whose tremulous soul the notes of starry spaces hears their far appeal and cries amen and sets thereto the seal with which winged aspiration life devotes that seal rays golden flame and bright connotes the transmutation through the spirit's zeal of earthly passions to the high anneal that rings the harmony that heavenward floats while other triremes vain withstood the guile the lyric prow of orpheus easeful past in gladsome scorn's disdain the siren's isle and proud calliope o'er each black mast whispered her thrilling taunt in ears of pain i taught my thracian boy a heavenlier strain End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. McMaster University by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. As some gray captain of a merchant ship, whose prosperous voyage o'er the watery strife has large concern for all knows that his wife waits his homecoming up the horizon's dip with holier heart than crowds that throng the slip so he well knew thou flower elect of life chosen from out a clamour of voices rife waitedst his voyage or with prayerful lip fair bride 
forget him not through circling years but with a christ-like love deep as unfeigned surpassing that of commerce or of state with holy hands thy dower devote with tears of gratitude and loyal heart unstained thy sacred vow perform with soul elate End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Conduct by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Nay, Arnold, not three fourths, but all of life. The ethic spirit that makes conduct so slays all mythologies and witchcrafts low false sciences as well with ruthless knife lest intercourse of human souls be rife with demigods and unclean things below and work corruption at the founts that flow from hearts of fellow men in loving strife that spirit more than science is the hope of man's uplifting and doth knowledge make servant of individual social worth not truth for truth's own sake as tense we cope with life but rather truth for love's own sake calls forth heaven's plaudit round the girdled earth End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. International Arbitration by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Boom, boom, ye mellow joy bells like the sea. Peace, peace on earth good will and all hell gapes yet immemorial sadness ever drapes the upward way of far humanity all prone through dark and strait gethsemane thou camest in blood a cluster of trod grapes o bruised race whose wail so surgeful shapes melodious sorrows awful threnody late late love's areopagus unfurled right reason's sun-glad banner from the height while rage the furies in their cave beneath hush hush it is the daybreak of the world man's warring sky is passing out of night and stark black demons flit with sword in sheath end of poem this recording is in the public domain the house of god by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by G. Danjo. No finished castle is the house of God, the mind of Christ, supremest architect. Man's puny apprehension doth correct from age to age, and turns afresh the sod. The vast historic temple now is trod, neath loftier roof and heavenlier aspect new light new need revealed each ripe defect goes down beneath man's feet diviner shod alas humanity no more can grasp of thought of the divine artificer than holds of ocean crinkled shell on beach 
Yet his unfolding plan and vital clasp possess, O human soul, amid the stir of speeding worlds, love's flying goal to reach. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ben Nachmani by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by G. Danjo Oh, the brightness, clearness, beauty of heaven, Seer Ben Nachmani, Rabbi Levi said, Of the Haggadah master, thou of seven, Would that I knew whence light its fountain head. The master whispered in the rabbi's ear, The Holy One, blessed be he, In white himself doth robe, And then the whole world clear In beauty glows with his majestic light. Sayest thou so? That's word for word the psalm, The light, thy garment, in which thou dost wear. Thou tell'st it here, a secret neath the palm, O master thou of seven with whitened hair. And softer fell the master's whispered word, I heard it this, O rabbi, hast thou heard? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Renewal by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by G. Danjo In the old days, Vanucci, color-dowered, Lit up young eyes with vision large and pure, That gathered in its iris glow The lure of sea and sky, And beauty earth embowered. And Raphael Santi on the master showered The rich-hued passion of his soul, Secure in art that should for evermore endure. But as he wrought his vision was deflowered, For sake of art divine, a seer bright stole, Whose eyes had drunk the steadfast splendors true, of sacred gems this precious secret told oft sight of these doth color sense renew ah thus true soul assoiled of life thou eyest mid thy enduring work the quickening christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Christ by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by G. Danjo The Noonday Truth in its sevenfold beam Is the Christ Sandal shod, yea, the truth in warm gleam of color and shine, both of age and of youth, as on life's plains and wolds his soul's prism unfolds, the white thought of God in human passion divine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Revelation by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by G. Danjo. As rising waves, rich jeweled by the sun, in movement link their brilliance each to each, 
and flash their glories in one crest of light. E'en so, unveiling the Eternal One, did shew himself by signs and glimmering speech, then flashed in Christ his love-lit glory bright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Light at Eventide by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Gidanjo Through skies of molten gold and green the sun Floats with its cloud wake o'er the glowing rim Of closing day, the same horizon brim Glows green and gold with a glad day begun. So closes life's full day, its garden won, to those whose trustful souls are joined to him, the world's great light, whose hand the splendors limb at once of breaking day and day that's done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ben Shalom by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Gidanjo Ben Shalom read one night from out a roll. Vessel of honor, consecrate, O soul, prepared for every worthy work, and meet for the master's use, and finger on scroll, he prayed aloud, make me his silvern bowl. Lo, emeth at his side, God's angel fleet, yea, in his mansion here. And when unfold the everlasting doors, Chalice of gold, brimming with his great love, Heaven's vintage sweet. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Banishment by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Gidanjo As tiptoe dawn extinguished all the stars, There lay on a fevered flower the cooling dew. Full soon the scornful sun, with white heat glare, forever bade the offending thing from view. But as day closed, it outshone flaming Mars or wheeling splendors of the northern bear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Now are the bridles of the leafy wood by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Gidanjo Now are the bridles of the leafy wood O'er dusky brooks the golden sunbars fall Birds fan the moonbeams in the balmy dark Look me! The banners of the holy rood Shake in the battle's roar, Sweet duties call, Wings all my spirit like a soaring lark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
May's Fairy Tale by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo May's Fairy Tale Under the yellow chestnut tree the children played right merrily. From leafy gold came pattering down the prickly burrs with nuts of brown. I do believe, said bright-eyed May, we're pelted by some startled fay, for fairies love no trees so well as chestnut broad in which to dwell. Tell us a fairy tale, they said, a fairy tale, they eager pled, about the fairies of today, and circled round the wise-eyed May. With air of one who tells new truth, the gentle May with touch of Ruth, this tale of Elfland sweetly told, while all stood deep in autumn's gold. Long, long ago the fairies found their homes and flowers on the ground. The buttercups were full of them, and pansies sparkled like a gem. But fields by men were often mown, the flowers were plucked as soon as grown. Thus, without tents to shed cold dews, the pixies lost their brilliant hues. Their kirtles green and mantles gold were crushed and torn and smeared with mold. You should have seen Mab's ermine cape, draggled and muck till black as crepe. At last his gossamer hammock's gone, their daylight king, bright Oberon, who could not find two crimson heads of clover strung with spider webs. And Mab, the moonlight queen of elves, took solemn counsel with themselves. Twas early in the summer days, they met at twilight all the fays, under a grove with fronded plumes, whose trees were white with spikes of blooms, with elfin lance of wild bee sting, stood Oberon at the outer ring. His knights each wore upon his breast a firefly lamp and beetle's vest, with glow-worm crown of greenish light, sitting her fairy palfrey white, the queen by wave of saffron brand, hushed into silence, fairyland. Then with her sandaled foot she pricked, her wasp sting spur and palfrey kicked her moonbeam bridle firm in grip she plied the silken milkweed whip and rode straight up the waiting tree and out each branch its blooms to see when mab her own and palfrey wings of gauzy blue outspread the rings of wistful pixies leapt in two sitting erect her horse so true in silvery laughter broke each fay like silvery tinkling brook in may waving her saffron brand she said fairies your future home and bed and pointed up the flowerlit tree thither they swarmed as swarms the bee in turn each bowl and fronded roof was trod by elf queen palfrey's hoof till fays who bore the flame wood lamp swung in their peaceful airy camp that was a chestnut grove they found and as the sunny spring comes round queen mab when shines the silver moon and elfin bugles blow in tune still rides high up each chestnut tree that fays may know where safe they'll be in golden belted oberon swing in his hammock like a don for palfrey prints his tiny shoe on every branch that's wet with dew my story's told now for our play and is the story true, O oh May? With the air of one who knows the truth, the sweet-eyed May, tall for her youth, the overhanging branch down drew, and showed the prints of palfrey's shoe, and laughing said, Now you'll all see why it is called Horse Chestnut Tree. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My Robin by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo My Robin, BBD At the very dawn of day, my robin from the hill flies down, and from the fence across the way, with black cap on his handsome head, and slattish cloak and vest of red, he calls me from my easeful bed. Dear up, dear up, dear! cheer up cheer up cheer constant as the coming morn he leaves his green fir copse to see if i will greet his breezy horn and share his joy that day is here 
to shimmer the sea the fog to clear and yellow the corn of the hasting year dear up dear up dear cheer up cheer up cheer ah robin so debonair so glad of the darkness gone away so heedful of this heart of care sweet to me is your round delay born of a spirit so tender so gay let me join you in duet for aye dear up dear up dear cheer up cheer up cheer end a poem this recording is in the public domain Elissa by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk I hold my secret fast, sunset I watch, and dawn, Wait the white moonbeam cast, the pall of night down drawn. Then in the ebon dark I whisper to myself, while every sense doth hark lest blade or leaf or elf should catch the trembling word and all the listening air be to its utmost stirred the giddy world aware the willow heedful is and the titmouse peers at me the king cups nod and quiz with an air of mystery but no one knows at all i hold my secret fast the wizard loon may call till night be overpast troops of bright eyes may smile the people look me o'er the parson turn the stile friends tarry at the door i hold my secret fast sunset i watch and dawn see the blue heavens o'ercast the pall of night down drawn and then in raven dark i whisper to myself my whitest soul a hark lest blade or leaf or elf should hear the trembling word and all the listening air be to its farthest stirred the rolling world aware end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hummingbird by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by nemo the hummingbird thought sudden presence out of blank air humming of wings here a whisk and a flash sipping red balm there and the silence sings thy will works its end in freedom complete deed flashing in sheen forward or backward as easeful as fleet as a spirit unseen plumed gem all athrob thy ruby throat burns as from the hot kiss of a heaven-smit soul as it panteth and yearns in its rapture of bliss thing of beauty of life bright wink of a day when will be what we are freed of this garment's hem o soul get thy wings find the red balm for a life of earth and of star flash with love a live gem and a poem this recording is in the public domain. The Hepatica by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Hail, first of the spring, pearly sky-tinted thing, Touched with pencil of him who rollest the year lo thy aureole rim no painter may limb vision thou hast and no fear 
fair child of the light what fixes thy sight wide open thy roll from the seal of the clod and thy heaven writ scroll glows beautiful soul with the shining of god thou look'st into heaven as surely as stephen so steadfast thy will is and from earth's ingle nook seest christ of the lilies and daffodown dillies and catchest his look and a portion is mine rapt gazer divine from thy countenance given angel bliss in thy face i've looked into heaven as surely as stephen from out of my place end of poem this recording is in the public domain the white rose at blank's grave by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by bruce gachuk rose pendant in calm of the sun a type of my holiest thought fair substance and emblem in one sweet rose sweet soul without spot sweetness of beauty of god both over and under the sod each moulded in earth's cloud and shine white fullness of being complete love's rose of beauty divine thy past but evolvings sweet now moment of essence for i thy future eternity's day o rose in the mirror of time calm image from under the sod o form of eternal prime all peaceful beauty of god fullness of seventy times seven made without hands in the heaven what though thy time garment fade and vanish from out of my sight thy beauty shall never know shade with the chief of the sons of light redeemed from under the sod ravishing beauty of god end of poem this recording is in the public domain The War Hercules by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Gachuk Under Mount Eta, the blue Artemisium, Flanked about with huge crags, Stilled its wild winter drum, The sun turned aside, The sea nestled in calm, Zeus's wisdom of calm, rude Hercules, died. A wine glass of azure from the breast of the bay, caught up by the sun, smiled on by the sun, hope's halcyon ray. Kiss of love for a bride, kiss of peace and of calm, Zeus's wisdom of calm wild hercules died a nest and a home on the wintry sea on the blue artemis in the rough country heaven set in the azure tide the sea nestled in calm zeus's wisdom of calm fierce hercules died o halcyon of rest sweet azure of peace brood thy sky-tinted eggs fill the world with increase on the sea's bosom ride now it nestles to calm zeus's wisdom of calm mad hercules died
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Cool of the Day by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk To him that hears the calling in the calm And, naked, feeds his soul at wisdom's lip Bird, grove, and brook, God's voice in silver psalm are like a secret honeycomb, a drip. Remote in thought from every living thing, silent the sage, without his threshold sate, pondering the mysteries of Gyges' ring, dreaming of timeless years and iron fate. The whir of sudden wings his ear awoke, a lark rose free in its gray singing robe. O oh, miracle of life! In speech he broke. A bird is greater than the solid globe. But yesterday I saw a hillside grove, whose trunks were clad with lichens, gray as frost. At night a storm of rain and wind fierce drove each bold to-day in living greens embossed and so i said the clinging lives which make yearful and spectral those who yield them ruth shall when o'er these the night in storm doth break wreathe them in freshness of immortal youth Adown the steep cliff's face I saw an urn, its waters full, a crystal brook to-day. The silvery bubbles coursed each scar by turn, safe as on a full-fed meadow stream in May. I thought of that sweet scripture Satan used to tempt the Christ, and knew it true they bear in woven hands our souls else deadly bruised by hell thrust down some precipice's stair still at the breeze of day doth nature's god forth in earth's paradisal bowers walk and of soul freedom love's restoring rod and angel guardianship he deigns to talk end of poem this recording is in the public domain beauty by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo beauty one had I two loaves of bread, a a, one would I sell in the hyacinths buy to feed my soul, or let me die. Beauty, dew sweet of heavenly birth, thy flowers writ of grief, not mirth, thy rainbows footed on the earth. Rainbows and hyacinths, O oh, seers, your voices call across the years, the bread of beauties wet with tears. Two. The living words from beauty's mean, then blade by swordsmen swung more keen, spirit and soul divide between. Pure as a sapphire blue from blame, humble as glad of holy a same, love's sevenfold beam, a flashing flame. Three. It yearns me sore, so near, so far, my heart moans like the harbor bar, for coming of the morning star buy hyacinths a goodly share ascend o soul love's iris stair the bridegroom waiteth for thee there end of poem this recording is in the public domain the dragonfly by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by nemo the Dragonfly 
One. Winged wonder of motion and splendor of sheen, cruising the shining blue waters all day, smit with hunger of heart and seized of a quest, which nor beauty of flower nor promise of rest has charm to appease or slacken or stay. What is it you seek, unopen, unseen? Two. Are you blind to the sight of the heavens of blue, or the wind-fretted clouds on their white airy wings, or the emerald grass that velvets the lawn, or glory of meadows aflame like the dawn? Are you deaf to the note in the woodland that rings with a song of the white throat as crystal as dew? 3. Winged wonder of motion and splendor of sheen, stay! Stay a brief moment, thy hither and thither quick beating wings, thy flashes of flight, and tell me thy heart. Is it sad? Is it light? Is it pulsing with fears which scorch it and wither, or joys that up well in a girdle of green? 4. O breather of words and poet of life, I tremble with joy, I flutter with fear. Ages, it seemeth, Yet only today into this world of gold sunbeams of play, I came from the deeps, O crystalline sphere, O beauteous light, O glory of life. 5. On the watery floor of the sibilant lake, I lived in the twilight dim. There's a world of day, some pled a world of ether and wings a throb close over our head. It's a dream, it's a whim, a whisper of reeds, they said, and anon the waters would sob, and ever the going went on to the dead without the glint of a ray, and the watchers watched in their vanishing wake. 6. The passing passed for A, and the waiting waited in vain. Some power seemed to unfold the tremulous waters around yet never in heat nor in shriveling cold nor darkness deep or gray came token of sound or touch a clear unquestioned yea and the scoffers scoffed in swelling refrain let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die seven but oh in a trance of bliss with gauzy wings i awoke an ecstasy bore me away o'er field and meadow and plain. I thought not of recent pain, but reveled as splendors broke from sun and cloud and air in the eye of a golden day. 8. I'm yearning to break to my fellows below the secret of age's horror. In the quick flashing light I dart up and down, forth and back everywhere. But the waters are sealed like a pavement of glass, sealed that I may not pass. Oh, for waters of air, or the wing of an eagle's might, to cleave a pathway below. 9. And the dragonfly in splendor cruises ever o'er the lake, holding in his heart a secret, which in vain he seeks to break. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Deathless by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk The coy soul of man Moving through its time span Unheeding of wings Tastes the death of all things, of the flower and weed and the faint-voiced reed. The fair seasons roll for you and for me, the inhabiting soul of the flower and tree, with the day of each born to be and to die. No eternity speech, no eternity cry that pierces above nor infinite thrill at the touch of love or the voice of his will from his fingers begot god breathed it is not
twas a shy fair one like a beam of light from the clouded sun that rose to the sight of the eye of emotion in the soul of the greek and eternized the form and vision devotion ever fixed on the norm type of beauty of flower of grove and of bower deathless unique not from pole unto pole is man's hunger of soul but eternity's set as a deathless fret in the heart of man as it beats the earth span beating not from the sod but an ongoing of god and it listens for him over time's flying rim and it sips or it stings a life from all things from the flower and the weed and the faint voiced reed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Dream by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. I dreamed the Lord of Life was dead. Tremulous awe fell on the earth virtue had gone from out all things the sun and rain were nothing worth rude power seized the painted woods and hurled their glory down the steep the landscape wrapped in cerements and left in death's eternal sleep nor bloom nor odor met the sense nor wind chant of the foliaged tree nor grove of singing birds nor psalm born from the ever voiceful sea color had fled the air and sky a stony stillness held the earth virtue had gone from out all things man's ebbing life was nothing worth and as i wept within my dream and knew my pulse of being slowed i sudden was aware of change a flush on pallid nature showed lo heralds of the arriving year the bugled flock beclangs the blue the hyla pipes by willowed run the flashing swallow skims the dew up from the rampike's ghastly arms the gold shaft high holes challenge floats while greening hill and valley laugh and shore breaks out in paean notes and in my dream i leapt for joy twas but an awful dream i said the lord of life for evermore he lives twas once for all he bled and waked from sleep by beating heart i heard the first red robin sing and knew that once again had come fresh from the life of god the spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Nature by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. The large, far intent of the kingly one is only begun in rearing the tent to nurture a soul is the shining goal keen science speaketh a word clear and fair the carbon in air the young oak seeketh in the greening years lo a giant appears shelter and warmth see 
hear final cause of nature's wise laws and the breath of the tree is life unto man and lengthens his span but the chemist who moves the atoms in dance his all-seeing glance by his working proves from far off to nigher feeds life that is higher from blade to full ear from acorn to beam unfoldings of dream linked series of cheer evolvings of grace shadows bright of his face sweet procession and slow every step of the way more precious each day till the starlit airs blow wake emotion that sleeps stir the fount of the deeps o heaven's own fact eternal that beauty as the sword on duty hangs silent on act of nature forever soul and body together nature series divine of act and of word from god's mouth seen or heard as thou bringst bread and wine i hear thy deep tone o oh, not these alone all divine unity writes the heaven-touched mind responsive once blind all divine harmony emotions attest in the glow of my breast end of poem this recording is in the public domain I Am by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk I am, and therefore these, Existence is by me, Flux of pendulous seas, The stable, free. I am in blush of the rose, the shimmer of dawn am girdle orion knows the fount undrawn i am earth's potency the chemic rays the rains the reciprocity that loads the wains i am or the heavens fall i dwell in my woven tent am imminent in all supramanent i am the life in life impact and verve of thought the reason's lens and knife the ethic ought i am of being the stress i am the brooding dove i am the blessing in bless the love in love i am the living thrill and fire of poet and seer the breath of man's good will the father near am end of the way men grope core of the ceaseless strife i am man's bread of hope water of life i am the root of faith substance of vision too the spirit shadowed in wraith urim in dew i am the soul's white sun love's slain enthroned lamb i am the holy one i am I am. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Glad Golden Year by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. 
the glad golden year wheels slow in its coming wild labor commotions and murmurings for bread while besotted with beer is the day's upsumming insurgent emotions to beauty stone dead what help do you say for these sons of men in god's image they're made cleanse their eyes to his light tune their ears to his lay give his bread once again whose price the christ paid heaven's bread is their right earth's means of achieving herds field food and river rain cisterns in sky and sunshine a listen forever are weaving and fain would deliver web of god's beauty nigh sense ravishing vision so bread in the field warm rain will transfigure the humble gray furrow with a million pearl suns on the lanceolate shield of emerald and ligure and the moon o'er each burrow of the low buried ones turns silver the spear tips in the dusk with her lips and when breezy morns told all ripples in gold with envious repining or solace of delight as emotion is pure or turbid with ill man views the outshining from the heavenly height feels the sweet picture's lure hears the bird cops a thrill makes him lord or does not of the park house or cot who holds the sure key to this largesse of treasure is a king among men though a workman in blue of a strain yet to be who with god taketh pleasure in the young earth again and feeleth it new slow speeds the glad year told by poet and seer yet i catch the far hum it will come it will come end of poem this recording is in the public domain tetrapla by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Love The blooming flowers, the galaxies of space, Lie pictured in a sheeny drop of even, And globed in one round word, on lips of grace, Shine out the best of earth and all of heaven. Sacrifice green haloed cup of the gods cool from the deeps fountain of life whence comes thy wave that blesses the burdened cloud attempts the mountain steeps to perish mid the rugged wildernesses liberty thou rugged guyon of man's free behests belted and helmed neath god's red thunder flails world climbs upon thy many cloven crests and ordered kingdoms in thy fertile vales beauty the grace of strength the shaggy hills attest and cresting billows in their power serene beauty was suckled at no weakling's breast she sits the maned lion like a queen end of poem this recording is in the public domain fairy glen 
by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Hid in the virgin wilderness, the fretted Conway's fairy glen, this summer day reveals its charms for painter's brush or poet's pen. The air is flecked with night and day, the ground is tiger dusk and gold, the rocks and trees empearled in haze a soft and far enchantment hold the place is peopled with shy winds whose fitful plumes waft dewy balm from all the wildwood and let fall an incommunicable calm through cleft rocks green with spray wet moss deep in the sweet woods golden blooms the amber waters pulsing go with foam like creamy lily blooms shuttles of shadow and of light in gleam and gloom the watery woof as rolls the endless stream away beneath the wind-swayed leafy roof so life's swift shuttles dart and play as ceaseless speeds its flashing loom our day is woven of sun and cloud a figured web of gold and gloom god's arbor this enchanted glen the air is sentient with his name put off thy shoes from off thy feet the trees are bursting into flame end of poem this recording is in the public domain in city streets by theodore harding rand Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. The city's ways were crowded thick. I bent my steps all through its mass of men and women, stone and brick, its whirring wheels and piping brass. And all day long, with hurrying feet, i trod the surging marts of trade yet in the rush and roar of street a calm within my breast was made for visions came of fair things wrought by beauty's witching hand and grace upon my spirit when i caught life's springtime image of her face blue violets in mossy bed flashing with jewels on their breast the sky stained eggs of robin red laid in her lined adobe nest the shy lone brook crept soft upon lest i should fright its brattling play the woods a hark for something gone or whispering of elf and fay the silver lake with lilies in bloom their cups half full of heaven's gold the circling shore all pranked with plume of ferns whose fronds the waters told and up the hill the white throat song a crystal bell that shakes the dew while floats in dream the cloud along and veils the palpitating blue the musical and dreamlike rain falling on roof or fragrant hay the blood-red spear unflushed of pain of sunbeam thrust tween battens gray and in a trice the sculptured shore where halcyon tides with wonder wings redden their plumes in toil to soar to where evangeline's memory clings such sights and sounds swift came and went glad sunshafts of an april day and to impetuous traffic lent the restful sweetness of the may imprisoned close in city marts o childhood so divinely fair for thee deep in my heart 
of hearts sweet pity beats her wings all bare end of poem this recording is in the public domain bay of fundy by theodore harding rand read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk deep bay broad breasted and brave oft rocked in thy swaying arms beneath the hidden sun as foam bell tossed on thy wave i drift again mid thy charms to sphinx-like blomadon why are thy glories untold thy cliffs of purple and red and crystal veined rocks thy hasting waters deep rolled neath skies whose colors are spread with art that all art mocks thy faltering ranks of white mist flanking vast floods and vast ebbs a mimicry of war oriflams of dew-sprent list banners of gossamer webs soft blown as lights of thor the smooth shining flats all bare to the heavens nakedest ken mirror the hills like lakes the drowsy lull of the air will stir anew to life when the tidal note awakes from languorous south seas that creep these odors dank issue forth odors of sun-steeped brine it comes a breeze from a deep full fed from seas of the north a waft of vikings wine now beats the pulse of the flood the throbbings deep of a heart felt all around the world now smites its rhythm with a thud with ictus sure of its art that mountains huge has hurled the unsold rivers and creeks have being have life to the full into their mouths rebreathed as heaves the broad breast that seeks tem bosom each leaning hull bare on red banks tide seethed the iron gride of the flow powders the rocks in its path and bears the dust afar to build their urns where may grow sweet grasses and primrose wraith fair grand prey tantramar builder unbuilder of shores thresher of cliffs vapor stoled god's master workman strong yet on thy bosom the oars of sailor lads ply and fold to sweet refrains of song and glad in thy twinkling smiles awing like seagulls the ships are breasting stout the breeze ah me thy treacherous wiles witching fog wraiths draping rips currents of iron seas o fundy deep breathing sea regal in power and rimmed in hollow of his hand captive to beauty yet free sleep now thy basin is brimmed in fair acadian land haloed with pearl-raying rings the moon at her utmost poised looks on her silver shield and the tide wakens and swings ebbs with a clangor far noised and wheeling wings afield end of poem this recording is in the public domain
at the look of partridge island by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk what more can world-worn spirit ask than here in nature's arms to bask and see the plangent tide at task the zest is swift as lusty youth touched with an undertone of ruth invincible as ageless truth the wonder of all wondrous things how coy the birds they lift their wings the wary ship to her anchor swings sun moon and stars of ancient prime and of to-day in confluence chime the universal one sublime pouring these floods of deep surcease in universal pain release in universal travail peace the strong right arm is here laid bare in strife by which he doth declare another shall not with him share forces of universal law which hither these vast waters draw send through my soul his tides of awe while universal radiance charms and beckons to his winsome arms to soothe my timid soul's alarms of joy of grief he does not rob the light with intermittent throb falls on the waters glad a sob here he and i are conscious each of each a deep a waiting beach a shell a sea that doth beseech how all unswift my eyes to see the universal god in thee who walked the waves of galilee give freely give thou dost not dole pour chrismal balm upon my soul anoint me from thy golden bowl in travail pain grief joy the wave slumbers nor sleeps the earth to save this word the blissful god he gave ere yesterday in palestine love's flagon poured the ruddy wine life of the universal vine the tameless tides unresting seethe i rest me for he works beneath peace peace the toiling waters breathe peace healing peace in murmuring main in brooding sky fanned by lone crane the sunbeams bicker in the lane peace on the lighter's falling sail peace on the ships that breast the gale and peace in human hearts that fail end of poem this recording is in the public domain the stormy petrel by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo the stormy petrel fair hero brave hero of sea the sea in its darkness of wrath i run down the breaker with thee i mount the next in its path our hearts be together charmed one lift their wings as fearless as free ride the gloom as if twere the sun gold bridled for you and for me summer rain the cold drifting sleet that whistles as spiteful as hail a roadstead the billows that fleet under the black lash of the gale we laugh at their seething their roar draw our breath full in their face we have wings we know we can soar 
your secret and mine in embrace wings wings the soul of our life outspread they victory tell uplifting amid gulfs of strife wafts heaven that keep us from hell brave hero winged hero of sea the sea with black tempest and breast here we mount on the breakers free soon to soar into calm and to rest end a poem this recording is in the public domain oblivion by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by bruce Kachuk. the all-devouring sea i said while looking on the green and red-ribbed rocks atilt that flank sharp's head the diary of the rain cloud driven to yield again its spoil by heaven the west wind serving the replevin notes of the ocean's teeming floor the carven shell the seaweed spore and ripple marks of tidal shore vast tablets of the world of eld a mighty bodleian unspelled by ravine into dust compelled the hills are fated to their fall upon the great upon the small oblivion drops her raven pall and then i thought the form and mass may baffle ken of eye and glass and yet the record may not pass tittle and jot where all seems nil a finer form in form may still wait touch of that which doth fulfil the liquid air unseen unheard writes in an everlasting word the wing beats of the hasting bird the sweet light leaves and bears abroad a picture of the wide realms trod with winged feet gold sandal shod etching in truth and beauty's grace beyond compare of antique vase on fronting hills the others face nor shoreless deeps of space debar blazon on earth of records far in greening orb or burning star i said coined for exchange in mart of purblind men with leaden heart this word oblivion on life's chart deft science balance now prevails this simulacrum in the scales the verdict to the counter nails and then distraught by onward sweep of meditation long and deep i sought me out a place to weep o soul may not thy leaves i mused stirred by death's shock through all diffused reveal thy story unconfused clear traced by thoughts all subtle beam a quickened palimpsest a gleam reorient out of dusk and dream End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sea Music by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Fleecy white waters, shorn by the tempest, wrathful and doomful, rolling to land naked and lustrous fiercest of smiters straight for the stern cliffs iron to steel shock unto shock calls boom answers boom roars the huge tide loom thunder and storm torn are the vast webs 
woven of tumult flung to the cloud rack tatters of sound the glistening waters again are marching loyal and true under the hollow sky a hundred million of men throbbing as fiery dew under the morning's eye list to the repetend note multiplex tone of the sea refrain of grief of mirth on violet air afloat far borne to mountain and lee to the home of its birth list as its music unbraids rivulets pour from the hill winds wash the lips of the trees the brook by the rocky glades brattles its way to the mill through fields a dream with bees forests of pine and of fir plain as their dark plumes are fret by the free coursing winds alder and golden birch stir to notes too sweet to forget sung by brook as it winds hark the lone laugh of the auk as twere a disprisoned soul come from out the shining foams and the loons ha ha and mock mid the torn surf's booming drum or hushed tides star sprent domes the ring dove coos in the grove the cataract's thunders jar rapids swirl white and hiss peoples in temples of love echo their anthems afar diapasons of bliss great flux of the world o sea blood of earth's wild pulsing veins beating to orbs afar your life and mine cannot be unlinked with god's joys and pains here or in throbbing star list as its music unbraids list to the much sounding sea list to the repetend note multiplex tone of the sea refrain of grief of mirth on violet air afloat far borne to mountain and lee to the home of its birth end of poem this recording is in the public domain summer fog by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by nemo summer fog one waft of beaten brine of the bay tonic keen as steel and strife blowing wet and cool in my face tang of bitter savour of life two billows calm of whitest fog over ships and homes now roll breath of sea in quest of heaven groping blind as human soul blearing hiding muffling all life itself laid under the shroud three breath blown veils of faltering mist filmy dreams of luminous cloud shifting curtains fret with air noiseless sped as northern lights opening shutting gaps of blue gleams and glories glooms and nights torn by winds and riven in spray borne afar o'er pine trees tall clinging round the mountain crest melt in azure roofing all four mystic phantom mime of life witching visions vanishing play belts of shadow rending veils cloudless dome of perfect day five come again white vapor of seas blow thy pungent balm in my face soft illusions weave o'er earth charm me up to heaven's embrace 
and a poem this recording is in the public domain the arethusa by theodore harding rand read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the arethusa a pearly boat am i from silver crag i hail wrought of the sea and sky freighted with moonbeams pale i hoist my purple sails to catch the starbeams gold and furl them in the gales the sun blows over bold rainbows and flying tints and sunsets crimson glow a thousand gleams and glints all day do come and go but as the silver moon rolls up the breathless blue and all the stars in swoon are hidden from my view i ope my hatches wide and laid with pearl and sheen to deck my home-bound bride the basin's peerless queen end of poem this recording is in the public domain Diane and Fundy by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Diane and Fundy Designs for a Timepiece 1. The Enchantress In silver shoon, on sapphire pavement clear, Fair Diane walks the overarching night, Her spell she lays, Great Fundy leaps with cheer, She breaks, he flees in elemental might. 2. The Lovers Diane, pale Diane, sailing the upper sea, Searching for lover lost on earth's lone beach. And Fundy, forward, backward, ceaselessly, By love's impulsion borne to utmost reach. 3. Art and Science Diane with silver robe from her shoulders flung, and Fundy with his tidal arc engage, beating as a great pendulum forth swung, the seconds of the geologic age. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Fisher's Song by Theodore Harding Rand Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson the old fisher's song from the broad-shouldered cobaquids we saw a prone blomadin in lotus-eyed repose the immemorial vigil lapsed to dream the basin lay as if in calm of swoon upon the bosom of the breathing tide the drifting ships wide-winged in air in sea sailed double on a single keel a ship in either stilly heaven above beneath the day was warm, and as we lay beside the woodland brook and watched the pinfish play, we saw the sky within a silver pool, like a great vase of lapis lazuli, veined with the feathery spray of cirrus cloud, while cumuli in spotless beauty bloomed therein, a garden of the gods, and all the pool seemed fragrant with a myriad sweets. There's promise of fair morrow, Harold said. The witness of the sea and wood is one. The hissing brine, moonstruck, comes vengeful up its iron gateways with remorseless flood. This little brook in rage and foam tears through a hundred hills. Each sets a mirror at our feet of beauty's self. And so I ween the fury of the age will end as full of calm as are this sea and pool of heaven. And breasting an old path to the carved shore where fell at ebb the sea-green billows clear, the path o'er tangled thick with alder hung with tags that take the rich brown van dyke love and cool with dusky air in which all still high bright and fronded fern and lichen spruce swam deep in voiceless sea of wildwood balm my eye had sight of emerald moss and bells that wreathed the bearded rocks that once were fire ho here is where the fisher lives who sings all day while fingering nets and chants the tide to sleep cried harold as he tends his sayings at night some threescore souls like his would make a state and one such state the golden age this old man never knows when spring is past but pipes a robin song from may to may a fresh-blown breezy song of coming good he's piping now 
heirs of the century sons of the next hearten your spirits your souls keep unvexed there's an ebb in the tide there's an open sea wide but where sun and star dart you've a trustworthy chart beside the wave-worn cliffs painted with rainbows of a thousand storms we sat us down and took on grateful cheek and brow the walking winds that yestermorn far out atlantic's gray unresting waste in awful tempest smote the full-winged ship and plucked it naked to the hungry deep peace is of conflict born i said and good seems rooted oft in ill man gropes in fog and is a child tossed in a cockle shell the stars wink over him and then are gone the sun is not and when he deems he's lost the shore breaks forth in silver welcome sweet care for the coming man heirs of the race hearten your spirits gird quicken your pace there's a sound in the air there are trumpets a blare and there's nothing to dread you've god overhead the sirens once were symbol of chief fears that met the hardy mariners on life's main said harold musingly but now the coast is set with sirens groaning lest he touch the isle mist veiled and hooded white with fog but cruel as the sisters twain of death science to-day the witchery of the past turns into truth to guide the course of man tracks to its lair disease and bolt and flame seduce to service of the struggling race while breeze of health begins to fan alike the cheeks of rich and poor in city ways and wisdom cries aloud in every street you of the world ages saviors of man hearten your spirits lay open god's plan labor hungers and wastes while love tarries nor hastes yet the notes round and clear the full time draweth near but what of man's grim lust and greed said i the comradeship of stars and night is not more awful than is that of man with sin nor shows more steadfast purpose gainst the light the sky and air fresh washed with summer rain forthwith begin to cloud with haze and smoke till smit again with lightning's wrath and torn by buffet of the thunder's pealing voice so hath it been with man till judgment ire reddens in vain to purge his murky sky and flash the light of god upon his soul the beastly lure of drunkenness that cloaks itself in the white mantle of the christ delusions wan that prints mirage for sight on eyes of civic crowd and nations too or unclean faith of soils in simple hearts the simpering guile that toys with capital and robs the workman of his honest wage while like the surging murmurs of the sea sounds out the moan of willing labor's voice for bread to fill its famished children's mouths the lust of power to sit in place of god and to turn for selfish ends the wheels of fate of fellow man these wait a day of doom heirs of the century sons of renown lift up humanity's broad kingdom and crown there's a purpose replete to put all neath man's feet and we see it begun in the virgin's crowned son injustice harold said with eye that burned like a star is the devil's own trademark and hottest comes from hell through saintly hands the race of man is in the making yet hypocrisy still deftly apes true worth thus prophesying universal good nature is non-committal of her end but god is hiding not man's destiny yon fitful beacon flares the dark night through and then the kindling clouds days herald burning golden dawn earth's skyward crags which thirst for news from god are bathed in heavenly light and from their sunrise shoulders the full morn shoots far the splendors of its coming noon the shadows of a fleeing night yet dim the age and mask a hundred ills as good more eager grasp that since they haste away but from the slopes there pours a clear new light divinely aired above that of the sun philosophy of schools nor science wise nor labor of itself life's secret finds that fulfills the promise of man's vermeil bloom tis love alone can sheathe the alien sword and crown mankind in his own kingdom lord 
heirs of the coming age makers of man the christ be your pattern i choose with elan there's a presence at hand there's a voice of command it is love king of men alleluia amen and as we turned toward home by open beach the waves were loud and clamor on the shore but over all and far away we caught the drifting chant of the old christian seer it is love king of men alleluia amen end of poem this recording is in the public domain Nora Lee by Theodore Harding Rand, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Nora Lee, away from Howth into the south, a staunch brave ship left harbor mouth. The Easter Bell, all sails a swell, gallantly swept to sea, they tell, and Nora flamed like one ashamed when her fair sailor man they named. Three moons did heap the cresting deep since Nora Lee was wed at deep. Up from the dim gray ocean's rim no tidings came of ship or him. A seagull's wing would make her sing, and I with smiles her wedding ring. A signal high flew in the sky, she knew the Easter bell was nigh, and pulled a rose as wife that knows her good man cometh at the close. The white ship came, twas not the name, and Nora Lee was not the same. The Kraken grim in dream did swim beside the Easter bell and him. The ocean swell and harbor bell chimed in an endless passing knell. In gleaming green of breakers sheen, the pallid light of death was seen. The shaping clouds, the mist like shrouds, floated in ever thickening crowds, till piping wind her blood did bind, rose by the phantoms of the mind. Cheer up, good wife, the neighbor's rife, said all. The bell has charmed life. Brave Captain Head, no dawn a reel, in vain e'er signaled him, tis said. Of all this town, from foot to crown, no sailor has so just renown. The winds that blow, the reefs that grow, each one by heart he'd know, he'd know. Some night full soon, or morn or noon, the bell will fly her home just soon. The days they came and went the same, the moons, the tides, the mists, the flame. And Nora said, Since I was wed, six moons the heaping tides have led. In gloom I pine. Love makes him mine, alive or dead. I'll throw the line. She pulled a rose as wife that knows her good man cometh at the close. Three neighbors true with her she drew to the gray shore, and calling through, with passionate leap far to the deep, the lifeline good wives always keep. Oh, Mike, my man, my dear good man, the line, the line, my dear good man. Calling so sore down the shore, as fell the wintry surge's roar. Across the line of foaming brine, low answer came that lit her eyn. The neighbors three with Nora Lee all heard the words from out the sea, yet none e'er said what passed the web, a fearsome awe o'er them was spread. When next boon fell, the Easter bell sailed into harbor, as they tell, with silk gassoon a stream a boon, and Nora in her calm did croon, and softly tell, I knew it well, his head it tosseth with weed and shell. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To W by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. To W. Neural and hemal arch, you say? Tell out man's history today. Brain and mechanics have their way. Is structure then sole test of kin? The ape from man in form and skin is far as holiness from sin? Emotion swears with hand uplift that beauty is no mere makeshift, significance divine is drift. Beauty of sound, articulate speech, 
lories and pies might simians teach these therefore nearer to man reach while nightingale and mocking-bird approach in music's heavenly word closer than mammal e'er conferred were structure and function parallel the word might break the mystic spell but function doth its test compel upward to man the beaver deft in structure gains of tail bereft but if there were no house skill left and if in structure beavers be in tooth and larynx nearer me than flirting blackbird in ash tree his song beyond all such control comes up in kindred echo roll with those that tremble in my soul true in mechanics there is seen a gross resemblance in the mean of ape and man though nigh and clean but grosser want of function shown of human attribute and tone sweet rhythmic utterance unknown beauty of form proportion fair and dignity all wanting there though neural and hemo arch compare of structure all you find is that a function it performs whereat a thus or thus of sights come at and yet you truly know far more feeling from out her open door affirms in speech of beauty's lore though awesome beauteous pleasant too inspiriting ennobling true or contrivance each as is due but no account of this you take your thoughts are polarized and make an open sea of a tiny lake you don't believe the colors of birds and insects are god's painted words to please the master of his herds mere marks ancestral once of use now useless as an empty cruise derived but not designed you choose yet why such skilful pains bestow that colors once had use to show vain zeal since that you cannot know fruitless your words is it not plain designed or not like april rain the end achieved is man's high gain tis folly to attempt truth's goal with logic got of half the soul truth will not have the half but whole beauty god's gladness seen in time lights up truth's calm white face sublime with radiance of the golden prime shall you and i look down for light nay upward let us fix our sight downwards the awful gulf of night End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Marie de Pure by Theodore Harding Rand. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Marie de Pure. Not with her outward eyes, but with her mind, her living soul, her faith, for she was blind. Marie de Pure, with simple loving heart, had seen the Christ and chosen the good part. She never thought with Milton in his pride, Does God exact day labor, light denied? But gave her willing hands as one who saw, deftly to plate for use the yellow straw. With humble workers of her craft she wrought for daily bread, and Christ's great lesson taught, that loved the life far more than meat regards and body more than raiment sweet with nards for when the pastor who like john had leaned upon the master's breast spoke words that yeaned the pity of his heart for those that sit in heathen night nor know christ's torch is lit marie de pure her soul winged like a dove eager to bear the news of light and love gave of her humble toil more than they all since love make willing answer to love's call amazed the man of god to marie said your gift is great a part i take instead but she with sweet insistence spake him nay i am richer far than those who see the day these workers of the golden straw buy oil when darkness falls that they may see to toil but i am blind i need no oil for light i give this love-lit lamp for darker night marie de pure a sweet and gracious beam speed from thy burning lamp a christ-like gleam 
to those who in darkness sit and some who without serving pray thy kingdom come end of poem this recording is in the public domain by the love by theodore harding rand read for librivox dot org by larry wilson by the love an easter idol twelve months agone the beauteous face all white with pity as a wave with foam sank in the dark of death four summers and the wafture of the fifth had poured their cataract of gold far down the shining shoulders of the seraph boy while love a father's and a mother's hung above its laughter like a thing divine o golden head that drifted down to death sweet eye and voice by silence swift devoured dawn's kiss upon the forehead of the day the fresh-blown surge of grief was stilled and halcyon hope her azure wings outspread as the hollow sky on eastern morn was like a lily filled with golden light swift through the hush of death the thrill of life touched the still chords of the fair mother's heart and woke unquenchable desire to lay white lilies from the darksome mother earth upon the tomb where circled like a dove her winged hopes the tomb where long ago white angels watched the birth of life anew beside the lilied mound she lingered long her rising soul pushed at the gates of death till like a creek from which the moon has drunk the tide they yawned empty and bare of hope all spectral grew her heart with tearless grief as some sweet plot of lichens reft of rain there are no angels now she said to roll the stone away oh that he now were here to raise my dead if tis not all myth and as she spoke she lift a bitter face into the eye of the bright easter day not far away she saw a little child of scarce five years and drawing near she knew him one who never felt a mother's kiss now sitting at the grave where one long month had slept his father kith nor kin bequeathed the boy in the wide circle of the earth she knew that rose and rosebud on the stem father and child had crimsoned life with love and that the wind of death had snatched the rose and left the unsheltered bud alone yet blinded by the night of her own grief scarce had she seen his golden day's eclipse now swift she marked the tender mobile lips the spirit light aglow in eye on brow and the rare beauty of the noble face is your name mary fearlessly he asked who with the angels talked when the great stone was rolled away oh no dear child she said whom are you looking for with reverent mien yet eager voice for jesus said the child oh jesus is not here my darling boy he's risen you know yes said the wistful face i've waited here all day for him to come and raise my father up i thought perhaps he sent you tis so late to bid me stay a little oh tis never too late for jesus he said and brushed away the tear he's sure to come for tis the rising day the woman stooped to kiss the wondrous boy and sat beside him there upon the grave and sobbed like organ swept by the master's hand what makes you cry perhaps your father's here to be raised up no my darling but my child he stroked the woman's hand don't cry he said jesus does not forget the rising day he'll surely come and give to you your child and me my father he will come to-night i saw the two men who from emmaus came go by at early morn and jesus will meet them and turn in this way come as they in wonder all about his dying talk and rising too the men will know him not but i shall 
I will call him to stop and raise my father up. How shall you know him, my dear boy? she asked. Oh, by his smile, and by the picture father showed me once, but, with his hands upon his heaving breast, I'll know him best by the love I keep in here. Shall you? she said. And are you sure you'll know your father? My own father, said the boy with wondering voice. I'll know him by the love, and so will you, your child. They will not look the same, for Jesus did not, but they knew him by his love. And finer grew the face, as the fond lingering voice in love's own tones repeated, And we'll know them by the love. Moveless a moment, as the tide at full, her heart hung in a balance, and as its tremulous deeps swayed to the signs of heaven, its wave broke o'er the banks of self to life. Philip, she cried, and clasped him in her arms. Jesus has gone to heaven, and I am sent by him to take you to your father now. Come. With faith strong as the noonday sight, instant the child clasped home her trembling hand and passed without the gates nor backward looked silent he went for expectation held him fast and a great light was on her face entering her home she bade that food be given to the famished boy and when the maid brought milk honey and bread with broiled fish he said with exultation now i know this is the house it's all here just the same, and he'll be here tonight. With winged feet, the wife sped up the stair to meet her husband's step, and in a rapture told him all, and of the wonder heart below. Heaven, a fair child, an angel boy, has sent our stone to roll away. For us, his vision is no less than for himself. O oh, husband, this is life's supremest hour for us. I shall know him by the love, sweetly, he says. It shall be so indeed, cried the father's yearning heart. As she returned, the child most eager said, in a sweet voice, half sob, but full of hope, Oh, wash my face and comb my hair before I see my father. Tis not too late yet. The touch of the ineffable child trust pierced deep her heart. Yet with assuring tones the words fell. Philip, come, let us now go to him. The arras opened on a face noble and winsome sweet, though smiles were close to tears. As azure bird on mountain stream halts a brief moment on some jutting crag, ere as a flash of streaming light it cleaves the dewy darkness of the trickling dell, so for a moment halted the sweet child, took one step forward, and then leapt into the arms where death shade once was deep as night, but where co-mingling love now glads the gloom, all lit by the sweet azure of the heart, with head thrown back and questioning eyes agaze. Father, you're changed, he said, but by the love we know each other, by the love, the love. The father's heaving heart did echo sweet, the love, the love. And nestling down upon the manly breast, the curly head, soft stroked and soothed with all the lullabies of love, was rocked like harbored sail to rest of sleep, lapped in the love which fed his simple faith and poured a golden Easter in the heart of her who groped in darkness among the tombs. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of At Minus Basin and Other Poems by Theodore Harding Rand